Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. A lot of um, people that watch my videos and, you know, know my work have been asking me to do some specific videos on global dimming and how the coronavirus basically shutting down industry at ever increasing amounts around the planet um, affects the global dimming by reducing the aerosols in the sky and the aerosols um, block sunlight of course so when they're removed you can get warming how, how large is that warming in some previous videos i talked about the case just for china so when china was shutting down cities you know in in uh, hubei province uh, wuhan and all the surrounding cities it reduced emissions um, and industry about about a quarter in China and since China is about a quarter of global in industrial output I estimated you know that if the global dimming phenomena was one degree Celsius then the Chinese shutdowns would would cause a warming of about 0 0.06 degrees Celsius or you know it, and that warming would be more like 0 0.25 Celsius over China itself so there's lots of components and now that um, many other countries are following suit and shutting down industry rapidly as they go to extreme social distancing measures, you know, how, how will that affect the global average temperature? So you need to break it up into the different components. So I'll start with aviation. Okay, aviation is about four to nine percent of global emissions. Now, from September, 11th, 2001, 9-11, aviation basically shut down over North America for three days. And there were some studies that looked at the effects on temperatures. Um, and it was determined that the, the, uh, the days were, the, the biggest change was the, an increase in the diurnal temperature range, which is the daily high minus the daily low. So, with the less contrails up in the upper atmosphere, more sunlight reached the ground. So the days were warmer, maybe up to about 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. Because the, there was a lack of cirrus clouds, high level clouds, icy clouds, the long wave radiation, the heat from the heating during the day could escape up into space at night. Um, so the daily lows were lower about half a degree. The net effect was that the daily temperature range, according to some papers, and it's still a bit controversial, disputed by other papers, but daily temperature range increased about 1.1 degrees Celsius. Now, our best numbers, and I'll talk about the scientist's warning article on global dimming, but sort of upper end numbers for um, the global dimming component on temperature is about one degree Celsius. So if we were to assume that about 50% of industry around the planet shuttered back to address the coronavirus emergency, we could argue that the, uh, that, that shutdown would increase the temperature, about half of the net effect of the global dimming, half of one degree, which would be about plus 0 0.5 degrees. So if that occurred, um, over land, it would be more like double that, about a one degree Celsius increase over land, over the water and oceans, about half of that 0.5 number, about 0 0.25 Celsius or so. Okay, so that's the, if global dimming was, you know, the one degree Celsius. Now, that's sort of an upper limit. Um, mo the most common number expressed for global dimming is about 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. So shuttering half the industry on the planet would cause a global average temperature rise of about half of that, which is 0 0.25 Celsius. And of that, about 0 0.5 degrees increase would be over land and about 0 0.125 degrees Celsius over oceans. And this is a direct effect. This is a direct effect of removing the aerosols. And the aerosols are sulfates, which basically act like little mirrors and block sunlight, but also you can get black carbon particles and the black carbon in the atmosphere will block some sunlight. 
but the black absorbs the sunlight and heats up these particles. These particles can then rise up. And some of them, if they rise up enough, then some of them rising up into the stratosphere, then they're not rained out quickly. They could have a, a longer term effect. But although they cause cooling at the surface, they cause heating um, at uh, higher latitude, higher latitude, high, higher um, altitudes where, where these particles are. This is a direct effect. Now there's also um, indirect effects and the indirect effects involves the changes in the cloud because a lot of the aerosols out at, act as cloud condensation nuclei and water droplets can get larger. The water vapor in the air as it rises you get cooling. That, those, that water vapor condenses into droplets and those droplets surround these cloud condensation nuclei which would be the aerosols so with more aerosols you get more clouds with more clouds if they're low level cloud you get less sunlight reaching the earth so get rid of the clouds and you can raise temperatures um and that probably that you could probably think is a first order you know many detailed scientific papers will be published i'm just giving my best educated estimate, call it a guesstimate or whatever, um, you know, that would maybe double double the, these effects. So, you know, um, if the global dimming factor was 0 0.5, then 50% of industry shuttered, you might get 0 0.25 warming and, and the clouds, you could add in more, more effects. Although the global dimming numbers, they should really account for these secondary or indirect effects. And there's also issues like, you know, when it's warmer, the clouds will dissipate more quickly. So the cloud duration is less. So if you don't have the cloud condensation nuclei to allow new clouds to continually form, then there'll be less overall cloud cover. Um, there's also uh, the difference between direct radiation and diffuse radiation from the sun. So the direct radiation is just the sunlight coming and hitting objects on the surface. Diffuse radiation is when the sunlight is scattered on the aerosols. So, you know, when the aerosols exist, there's a lot more of the diffuse radiation. Plants tend to like diffuse radiation. Um, so with less and less aerosols, there's more direct radiation. You know, it can feel hotter at the surface. The sun's directly on you. Um, and, uh, you know, that can, can increase uh, you know, temperature or, or the effective temperatures that you feel on, on the surface. So I'm going to go through, I've talked about a number of these things. That's just kind of summarizing my best sort of ballpark numbers now. I would also like to point out that we know that air pollution kills about 7 million people per year. So if you re reduce half of the aerosols, half of the air pollution, you could maybe argue that, you know, that three and a half million people would die per year instead of seven million because of the clearer skies. So this, so so the uh, removal of the global dimming and the air pollution could actually, you know, save 3.5 million lives. But people dying from the virus, of course, offset that. You know, if the global losses of global mortality from the virus was sort of those ballparks, you know, in, in, in several millions to, you know, five, 10 million, then a good chunk of that would be offset by less people dying from air pollution. But, you know, if we have a 1918 type pandemic where 50 million, 100 million, or even if it was double that or worse that, those numbers, of course, swamp out any, um, any of the benefit that you get from less mortality from air pollution. Um, now, a couple of things that I want to uh, point out before I show you the details is, you know, talk about personal protection equipment. So I've got this scarf and it's a good quality scarf. So it's a very fine um, thread count, very fine mesh size. And I've, um, you know, you could wear it like this to, to give you some sort of protection. There was a study evaluating things, but I modified this. What I did is I infused it with soap here. So what you can see is um, you can see the scarf here and you can see I've taken this section and first of all I took a bar of soap and it was wet and I just rubbed it but it, to get into the pores you can use liquid soap and 
infuse the soap into here. Now we know that soap kills the coronavirus within about 20 seconds. Okay, so I figure that I could improve the ability of this uh, to filter, you know, to use it as a mask, you know, and I double it up and I only put it on the one side. The other side is clear so it doesn't irritate my skin and I just fold it across here. Uh, let me let me do this. So I just fold it up here and it's very quick. You know, you can put it on, wrap around, wrap around and away you go. You got your um, personal protection equipment. I have glasses. So now, you know, is this crazy? I have no idea. I mean, comment on things that you're trying. You could also, you know, take a, a normal mask, you know, the N95, you can get N90 nine and a hundred you know the particle they filter out more and more of the particles and um you know you can infuse it with soap and try you know you're gonna block some of the airflow but you know it's worth it's worth a shot right i mean you can experiment with different things anyway this is what i'm using um this is my coronavirus survival guide you know some of these you know people you know survivalists you know they have food caches and forests and things like that, um, you know, and a lot of them, you know, have a place to go. I mean, a couple things in, you know, um, yeah, I've got had some different ideas of when it really, really gets bad um, to what, what to do. And of course, to stay sane, um, you know, I'm reading this right now, you know, how to survive in chess. You know, ignore the face value of your pieces and discover the importance of time, space, and psychology in chess. So beyond material. So so uh, Madonna wouldn't like this book, you know, The Material Girl. But anyway, he, some of you don't even know who Madonna is, you know. Um, and the other thing I do to stay sane is I'm learning how to juggle. I mean, I'm an expert with uh, one ball. You know, I can do two but I uh, can't do three, so I'll be doing YouTube videos to try to improve that. Okay, so let me get into my uh, slides here. Okay, so this is my website, paulbeckwith.net. Uh, you know, please support my videos by donating. Um, and I'll get right back into things here. So a couple things I wanted to just point out. Um, you know, there's a couple of really good uh, articles. Oh, one thing is, you know, once the government takes strong action to counter the coronavirus pandemic, it will still take one to two weeks to see an impact on the case curve and at least several more weeks to gain a semblance of control. OK, so it takes time. So, you know, don't expect instant results when you're when your country shuts down there's a lag of at least you know a week before you, you start seeing things and then you know it really helps after that i mean you're cutting the the exponential curves um and this is a decent curve this is an up-to-date curve on different western countries i mean the u.s is in horrible shape the uk is in very very bad shape you know italy's horrible right now um you know, you can have a look at, you know, what the countries that are faring much better at cutting that exponential growth. Um, and what else? Yeah, I mean, young people, you know, are dying. This 39-year-old New Orleans woman, she went for a walk one day. She's dead in her kitchen the next day. Um, thought she was sick, but couldn't get testing. Right? There's all these horror stories. Um and this is, but, you know, the gist of my video is going to be talking about air pollution and CO2 falling as the virus spreads. Okay, so this is a BBC article. There's lots of articles like this appearing. So, for example, over New York, carbon monoxide levels from cars reduced by nearly 50% compared with last year. Nitrous, nitrogen dioxide um, greatly reduced in China. Um, when they had their case in, greatly reduced in Italy. Okay, um, and Johns Hopkins, I just want to remind you of this site. This is the latest numbers, 307,000 cases. Um, and you can find your country. Canada is on the wrong side of the, Canada. Is, you know, it's faring better than a lot of these places, but it's 1,328 cases, cases in Ottawa. Okay, so I'll continue uh, this video. Um, thanks for listening so far.